Okay, welcome back. So today we're going to talk about goodness of fit tests. Okay, so when do we use a goodness of fit test? All right, so we've seen before, right, when we have categorical data, P or the population proportion is our parameter of interest. Right, we've seen how to do that for one sample. We can do Z tests there, normal distribution stuff. We've seen how to do it to compare proportions in two samples. Use the Z distribution there as well. All right. But what if we want to look at differences or maybe even similarities between more than two groups of categorical data? Okay. So this is where our goodness of fit tests apply. So let's think of a hyp hypothetical hypothesis, null hypothesis in this situation. All right. We'll start with this. So for instance, a situation where we've got more than three plus groups, right, say in groups, where they all have equal proportions. If I have in groups, equal proportions, the proportion of any one of those groups should be one over n. Right, on the other hand, the alternative for a goodness of fit test would be that each of these groups are not equal. A little bit more about our goodness of fit test here. Basically, what we're testing here is the null that our data fits some hypothesized distribution pretty well, or at least appears to. The alternative is that it does not fit that hypothesized distribution. Right? And in order to do that, we basically say, okay, how would we expect this data to look if it did fit that distribution? Right? So we compare what we've observed to what we expected. Right, kind of sounds like a, the idea of a test statistic. Right, we compare what we observed to what we would expect under the null, assuming it's true. A goodness of fit test can also in some contexts be called a test of homogeneity. Right? Homogeneity means everything is the same across the board. Right? That's essentially what we were checking for with that null hypothesis. P1 equal to P2 equal to P3 through all of Pn. Right? You can also call that a test of homogeneity. All right, so whenever we do any of these tests, we're going to have some sort of conditions that we have to check, we have to meet. All right, the type of data that we'll be using is, is categorical data, and it'll be data that actually fits what's called a multinomial distribution. All right, so binomial, we know about that, kind of looks similar to that. All right, binomial is where we only have two potential outcomes. A multinomial is where we have maybe more than two potential outcomes, but each with a designated probability, independent observations, all that kind of thing. So it's very similar to the binomial, except now we have multiple outcomes. Right? Our expecteds, we can't have zero expected values in any cell. And we don't want to have a whole bunch of really small expecteds. Now, if I have a whole lot of groups, we could have a few expecteds less than five. Right? But a general rule of thumb, we don't want less than 20% being, being smaller than. In our goodness of fit test, we use a, a test statistic we haven't seen, seen before, a chi-squared test statistic. Okay, so here's how it's calculated. And we know the general form of a test statistic observed minus expected over the standard error. This one's a little bit different. Okay, we still have observed minus expected in our numerator here. And so we're finding essentially the the absolute value of the difference there, right? then we're squaring it, dividing by the expected, and adding up this value for each cell that we're working with, or for each group. Right? The observed are what we actually saw from the data in each group. The expected are how many we expect to fall in each of those cells based on our null hypothesis. All right, so what does this chi-squared distribution look like, and why does this test statistic not look like what we're used to? It kind of looks like what we're used to, observed minus expected. Well, it's a little bit different because the chi-squared distribution is a little bit different. Okay, so the chi-squared distribution is not centered at zero. It's not symmetric around zero like the Z or the T. Right? It starts at zero and only takes on positive value. It's still based on degrees of freedom. So how do we find our degrees of freedom? Well, in this context, for a goodness of fit test, 
Here's how we find our degrees of freedom. We take K, where K is our number of groups, our number of cells. P is the number of parameters we have estimated. And we subtract 1. In a goodness of fit test, since our chi-square distribution is a little different, it's not centered around 0, we actually don't have to worry about this left-tailed, right-tailed stuff with a goodness of fit test. Right? A goodness of fit test, we're always going to treat it like it's right-tailed. So we're looking for the area to the right of our test statistic. Okay, so once we go through one of these tests, how do we interpret our results? Right? So remember what our null is. Our null is that it fits the hypothesized distribution. But even if we do fail to reject, right, we, we don't say we accept the null. Right? So we're saying if we fail to reject, we're saying, yes, this distribution looks like a pretty good representation of the data. Right? But it's not necessarily set in stone that this data has to come from that distribution. Right? Um, if you want to get into kind of some of the words here, we're saying it's not inconsistent with that distribution. Right? So think about that for a minute. All right, but if we do reject the null, right, we can say that the data does not seem to follow that proposed distribution. Right? So remember what the alternative was. The null is that they're all equal. The alternative is that they are all not equal. All right? But now the question is, okay, well, which one is not equal? Right? If I have a whole bunch of groups, maybe all of them but one are not equal or something like that. So how do we know? Well, whenever we reject the null of a chi-squared test, right, we always want to follow up by checking what we call each cell or each group's contribution to that test statistic. Right? A larger contribution tells me there's something potentially going on in that cell. All right, so that's the basics of our goodness of fit test. And we'll, we'll look at an example in the future. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.